Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the Gantt chart. Now, the Gantt chart is one that's fairly popular when it comes to being able to visualize time management or project management information. So it's going to help you illustrate that and maybe even a schedule if you're trying to illustrate some kind of a schedule that associates with a project. This is a great visual for being able to do it. It also allows you to be able to visualize and has components that allow you to show you a today line so you can see on your schedule where today is and whether or not you are completed through certain tasks on time or not on time. So it'll actually have not only the bar that stretches, shows you the duration of a task, the black bar that shows up in the middle of these other bars shows you how complete those items are. So it allows you to be able to visualize quite a bit on one single visualization here. This one's developed by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and take a look at where you can go download it and how you can use the Gantt chart. So our first step is going to be to go to the visuals gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, that'll take you to the custom visual gallery that we're looking at right now. And you're going to scroll down until you find the Gantt. So you'll scroll down, you're looking for the Gantt, which is right here. I'll select the Gantt and then go ahead and download the visual. You can see again, the sampling here of what it looks like. You can also download the sample here that Microsoft has provided, which if you take a look at that, it has some data sets in there that you can use to validate that this is going to do what you want it to do as well. Now, in our demonstration today, we're going to be actually looking at an entirely different data set. So once you download this, you're going to go open up the Power BI desktop. And with the Power BI desktop open, you're going to be able to follow along and work with me on an example. So I have the Power BI desktop open here. We're going to start by importing some data. So we're going to go up to the Get Data section here in the Power BI desktop and select that we want to get data from Excel. I've selected Excel here. I'll go ahead and go to the location where my data is stored. It's called Project Progress. So we're looking at the progress of a project here and the data that goes along with it. And so I'll select that workbook and hit OK. Once I do that, it's going to launch open the Navigator pane where I can select the spreadsheet. The one here called Progress actually has the detailed information where I can see what track this is in. So whether it's an item in a backlog, whether it's under development, whether it's in testing, or whether it's been moved into production or is being moved into production, I can see that information here. I can see the name of the task. I can see what, when it was actually started how long in days, this is the number of days here, by the way, how many days it's going to take or how long it did take, who is actually doing it, and what percentage complete it is. So some of these have 0% complete, meaning they haven't been started. Some of these have 100% complete, meaning they're already done. So we're going to go ahead and load this data into the Power BI desktop. And once it loads this data in, our next step is to import the Gantt custom visual. So to do that, we'll go over to the visualizations pane here and hit the ellipses and tell that we want to import a custom visual. We'll then hit import, and we're going to go find the custom visual that we should have just downloaded a few moments ago. I already had it downloaded on my machine, so I'm going to go find the Gantt here and hit open. All right, so we've imported the Gantt custom visual. You can see it appears here now, and I can go ahead and select that, and it shows up on my design surface. Now, I have fields here that really support this visual pretty well, but what I want to do is I want to put in my legend section, which track, again, track is going to be things like whether or not it's in the backlog or it's under development. The task, I have one here that's called task. That's actually what was being done. So cube development, sales dashboard, that sort of thing. The start date, I have a start date column. That's the start date of the task. So you can kind of see that it realigns everything here. The resource, I can plug that in and that'll show me that's gonna go down to the bottom section here underneath resource because these two are actually measures. But the resource is now gonna give it an assigned value into each of the task, which resource is doing it. So I have things like senior BI developer, junior BI developer, so on and so forth. We'll then plug in the duration, so that'll make it wider. The, the bar will actually become wider based on the duration. That's number of days. And then the completion percent, if we select that, that'll actually put a new bar inside of the other bar that shows how close that is to being done. Now you can actually look at the tooltips. If you hover above any of these here, you see there is a tooltip here where you can actually see those values in detail. So here it's showing that this is in the backlog and the task is called cube development and it's gonna start on the 28th of February. It's gonna take five days to complete. It hasn't been started yet, so it's 0% complete, and it's gonna be done by the resource called Senior BI Developer. Now, what's neat about this chart is it also has a today line. That dotted line that you see going vertically, that's where the today marker is, so that's today's date. It kinda of gives you an idea of when I recorded this, but that gives you an idea of if you're on time or not. So this one here called Design a Data Warehouse is about 90% done but it was started on the 17th, so it's not quite where it needs to be. I wanna have that guy done. I said it was gonna take five days, and I guess we're pretty close to being to that point where we are late, but in this case here, actually, I'm not quite late yet, so that one's one to keep an eye on. 
So there's a couple things you can do with this. Now, of course, there is things like cross filtering. If I wanted to, I could bring in other visuals. So say, for example, I wanted to be able to filter this down. Then I could bring in something like a slicer. So I can come over here, maybe add a slicer to this. And let's say I want to filter this based on the resource. So I can bring in a resource filter here, and you can see that appears here. It's a slicer now that I can, I'll make the text a little larger so you can actually see it. But now I can filter based on the actual you, the uh, type of person, the type of resource. So I can kind of toggle back and forth here. The other thing you can do as well, let me unfilter that for a moment. The other thing that we can do if we wanted to is we could also have some cross filtering between other types of charts. So if I brought in something like a cluster column chart here and said that I wanted to look at the task and maybe let's do a count of all the tasks that we have here. So I'm going to add in a count of tasks. Okay, and you can see we have a fairly similar number of tasks that are in here. Some, some of them have more than others, but you can see here that dim inventory load has more than one. So if I want to take a look at that one, I could select that task and I can get a closer look at that particular one here. So it actually has cross filtering both ways. I can select individual items here like this one, and I can see how it filters down the other items, or I can filter based on a chart or a slicer here on one side. So the cross filtering applies here just like it does in other visuals, which is very nice. Good deal. I'm going to go ahead and delete this chart. I'm going to leave the filter here, the slicer. I think that one's a nice one to have. But let's go ahead and talk through some of the things that we can do underneath the format paintbrush section. So I'm going to go ahead and select the GAN here and then go over to the paintbrush. And then you'll find underneath the general, there are a few things you can change. One item here that you have is called group task. That's what this one is, where you can actually group different tasks together. So what that means is if you have any task that appears here more than once, it'll actually group it in on the same line. So if I select that and turn it on, you'll notice that these two tasks now appear next to each other. This dim inventory load, I now have two resources working on this, one being the BI architect, and then one being the junior BI developer, and they're working on them in different stages. One's actually working on them in production, so my BI architect is the one doing the deployment to production. It looks like the development is being done by the junior BI developer. So I have kind of a tag team approach on this. The junior BI developer does the development, the BI architect deploys to production. All right, so that's interesting. You have that group task together, and you can do things like that. You also have the ability to, underneath the legend section, change the position of the legend. So in the top right is where it appears right now, but you can certainly move it around if you wanted to. If you wanted it in the top center, if you wanted it to appear on the left, you can move it around. You have some flexibility here. But what we're going to do is I'm going to leave it where it was at. But I just want to point out here, you have some flexibility with that. You can turn off or on the title. So I can turn off the title if I wanted to. It probably makes sense to be here. You can also kind of add your own custom title in here as well if you wanted to. I will, however, bump up the text here a little bit. I'm going to bump it up to about 12 so it's a little easier to see. Moving on, the next one that you have here is category labels. If you look at category labels, if you turn this off, by the way, you'll notice that's the text on the left-hand side. That's really the task that we're working on. I'm going to leave that on, of course, so we know what we're working on. And I might bump up the text a little bit here to maybe about 12-point font. The other thing that you can do here as well is you can increase the width of this because right now you'll see that there's a lot of carryover where it's not able to show the entire text here. You can bump this up a little bit here where it says width, and I can bump it up to something like 130, maybe even 140, so make it a little easier to see here. I'm not going to go any farther than that, but you can certainly uh, play around with that and adjust the size as needed. The next thing that we'll look at, though, is underneath task completion. If you expand this or even turn it off so you can see what it looks like, you'll notice that turns off the black bar that appears in between each of the bars that we already have here. Now, basically, what you can do underneath the, com the task completion is you can change the color of that bar, that black bar that's in between all the other bars here, by coming over to completion color and then adjusting the color here. So you may want to do that. Um, the only reason I suggest that is because if you have anything like black on black, so the ones on the top here where I don't have any completion yet, but if I did, it would be really difficult to see, you may want to change that color. I might change it to something like the orange here. Actually, that was more mimicking the color we already have in there. Let's pick something that's like maybe a darker orange. Oh, man, that's still, still kind of difficult to read. I might stick with, uh, you could do white. So white would stand out a little bit, kind of white against a darker color. That's something that might make it a little bit easier to actually visualize that percent complete. The next thing that you have is the data labels. If you turn off the data labels, you'll see that actually turns off the resource that's assigned to that task. And if I turn that on, you can adjust, again, the font size. You can also adjust the color that's being used there. I'm going to leave this down a little bit because we have some overlapping text in here. Next, going down, you'll see the Gantt data type. This is an interesting one. This is actually really helpful, and it's really going to change the whole perspective of our chart here. Right now, let me resize this so it's not so large. You'll notice that everything's being looked at at a week level. If you look at the Gantt chart data type, or date type, I should say, 
it's at a week level. But what we want to do, instead of looking at it at a week level, we want to look at it at a day level. And if we look at it at a day level, you'll notice that this chart is a little bit easier to see now. You may make it full screen. Maybe I ditched the slicer here for a moment, and just so we can get a good view of this visualization here. But now we're able to see this as a much bigger picture. We're able to really visualize this and understand what's going on at a larger picture because we're looking at this at a day level. You can still see the today line still appears here, but you're able to now see a closer look at this by adjusting that Gantt chart date type. And again, you can adjust that to either, we, we kind of played with it and moved it from a week to a day, but you could make it at the month level or a year level as well. And you'll notice how it adjusts that as you select those different types. So that's really it for the Gantt chart. I'm going to leave that at the day level. You do have some other options down here in the bottom, but these are ones that appear in every one of the custom visuals that appear that we've talked about. You have the title, the background, the lock aspect, and the border section here. Those are ones you should be very familiar with. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think this is a really cool visual. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or let me know. Uh, I look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot.